Well, 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 today is an exciting day. I don't know about you guys, but it's a day that I've been hoping would come in a while. We have a new supercar, proper, proper supercar from Maserati. So I'm here at the Autodromo di Modena today where we're going to drive this car on track later on in this video. But this is the latest, greatest from Maserati. And uh, a car which was developed uh, to be ma mainly a GT. It's also got some real track capabilities which we're going to discover when we get out on track in a little bit. You can maybe hear one driving fast in the background. Okay, quick little run through. We're going to start with the exterior of the car, then we're going to go inside and then we're going to go drive it on the track. But basically the first, well, one of the main things that they were focusing on with Maserati obviously being Italian was the design. The car needed to be beautiful and uh, I mean this is all subjective personal taste but I think it is stunning. So cool when you see it in real. It's, it's bigger than I expected. When I saw the first photos, I thought the car would be quite a bit uh, smaller. But the car uh, is, is, you know, has a strong emphasis on aerodynamics, as all modern cars do. But trying to make the aerodynamics kind of as discreet as possible and having the car uh, look as kind of classically Italian and beautiful from the exterior. So it's designed kind of in two parts. The top part of the car here in blue, which is here for pure design basically and the bottom part of the car which was go crazy get as much aerodynamics stashed in there as possible the bottom part of this car is also fully carbon fiber that's an option so for example the car that's going around on track is not fully carbon fiber but some really interesting aerodynamics for example the air that comes in here for the radiators which can then come out on the front hood but then also in the side skirts huge side skirts where the turbulent air from the tires comes out but also some of that warm air will come out as well the huge side skirts are actually kind of convenient with these beautiful doors uh, because it means that the side skirt can be really nice and wide which means the airflow is emphasized down the side of the car but it doesn't make it any harder to get in the ergonomics of this car are pretty fantastic and that is because the second kind of priority with this after design was making it a GT, a usable car that you can cruise around in uh, without it being too hardcore. So it's got a V6, twin turbocharged V6, 630 horsepower, 730 newton meters of torque. It's really low central driving position, really low down in the car, only weighs 200 kilos the engine of this car, 1500 kilos total. But it's really down low in the rear of the car which means that the balance should be, and we'll see on track, pretty impressive. We will drive, obviously, but there will be a fully electric version of this car coming. That one will be four-wheel drive, obviously, to put down the endless torque of an electric car. Now, from the rear, this I actually think is a fantastic angle for this car. It just looks so, so good. You've got full carbon fiber on this one as well. The starting price of this is just over 200,000 euros, but you can go up with specs all the way to around 300,000. You've got the two exhausts here, which are reminiscent of the MC Stradale. The noise is not as good uh, as, as you would hope necessarily from one of these, but with all the new filters and with it being a twin turbocharged V6, it is what it is. And the name, MC20 is obviously a throwback to the MC12, uh, the last kind of fully supercar, you know, based on the Ferrari Enzo. That was, that was quite a quite a special car. So the performance needed to be there with it being, you know, kind of the, the follow up from that car. So yeah, so they basically stashed in as much design, as much aerodynamics and as much power into this package as possible whilst trying to keep it usable. But that is continued through the interior and I'm actually going to take the camera in my hand for the rest of this. Okay guys, I'm going to show you as much as possible on the interior. We're now on my GoPro, uh, but we don't have that much time before I need to go on track and then we've got to be out of here. So I'm going to try and do this <laughs> as complete as I can in the short amount of time that we have. Have. These seats are really nice, bucket seats, they're actually carbon backed. I don't know if I hop into the car, I can maybe show you. I don't know if you can tell right there, but that is all carbon fiber. Around the back of the seat, the awesome doors with the forged carbon, quite light. And when you close them, you can see the Sonus Faber sound system, which apparently is quite good. We haven't had time to, uh, to test that yet. The doors are a mix of Alcantara and leather with white stitching. And you actually open them with a button down here, you see? So that works quite well. More and more cars are using buttons now instead of handles to open and close the doors. And then we've got this one with a massive spec, carbon all over the place. Now, really simplistic interior. Basically, everything happens on this screen, which you can switch on with this button down here. Touch screen, pretty intuitive. I was playing around with the, um, with the air con and stuff like that earlier. But um, yeah, it's a pretty intuitive system. You have your Apple CarPlay and anything you need, uh, you need right there. You can control your volume through this little knob there window controls and unlock and lock buttons are here reverse 
and drive buttons, but drive button also substitutes as choosing between auto and manual mode. And then you've got this, which is basically the most important part of the interior. This is your Manatino. So um, you can choose between three main driving modes. So GT, where everything's compliant, it's quiet. Corsa, which is one extreme, which is the track mode, where everything's really hard. The gearbox gives you a little bit more of a, an impact on your change gear. The car gets a little bit louder and sport which is somewhere in between but we're going to test those out more on track and we're going to do one lap in each of those you've got a little button in the middle here to control your suspension firmness and then wet mode and ESC off modes as well for each extreme steering wheel a lot goes on here start stop button launch mode and then your usual kind of um, cruise control settings and then volume controls if I start the car I can then show you the digital dash which is pretty cool. So we're in GT mode right now, but it actually changes if you go in sport mode, as you can see, and then even further if you go in track mode. And now, yeah, the car kind of livens up a bit more in track mode, and then obviously through the digital dash, um, yeah, things get a little bit more interesting. You can't see the carbon monocoque, which is a bit of a shame, but uh, it is what it is. And yeah, that's pretty much it on the interior. One last cool little gadget is that the rear view mirror is actually a camera because you can't see much out the rear. And then full Alcantara headlining. So uh, no, really nicely done interior, great visibility. I love the simplistic look and the use of carbon fiber in Alcantara. Uh, really nice place to be. But anyways, uh, I think they're waiting for me to go out on track. So let's, let's head out on track now. Okay guys, here we go. I need to get down a little bit with the helmet and close this door, massive doors. And you're into the carbon fiber monocoque, which we spoke about a little bit earlier. So seatbelt on. Okay, so, start button. Starts up, you can hear the twin turbo, bi-turbo uh, V6 kick into life. Now then, first gear, you just pull there. We're gonna start in GT, which I believe we're in right now. And then we're going to go through the different modes bit by bit. So bear with me because this is the uh, first time driving this car and first time on this track. So there's gonna be some adaptation time. We're gonna go straight into manual, however, down here. So then that's done. So we're gonna go super easy at first. I just kinda of wanna to get to know the car, get to know the balance. First impression is in GT, changing gears right there. It is so smooth. You don't even really feel the gear change going through. Now the sound, obviously, with all new cars and all the new filters, etc. It's not quite what we're used to, but it is what it is. Brake pedal, so carbon ceramic brakes are standard on this. We're obviously going quite slow to get things started. Carbon ceramic brakes, which feel quite, I mean, obviously we haven't pressed on it much. You can see blind acceleration here, which is kind of weird to get used to. But the carbon brakes feel powerful, but there's a little bit of getting used to to the feel because at first there's not too much that comes through but then all of a sudden they'll kind of come in and bite the steering feels really communicative you can feel what's going on quite a bit around front long left hand corner quite a technical track you can see here the steering wheel also just in itself feels really nice with the uh, Alcantara you've got a lot of carbon all around visibility is really good actually so the car was obviously developed as we mentioned earlier to be more of a GT so that's why we're starting in GT but what we're gonna do is I believe I just turn it to the right yeah like this and now we're into sport so sport we can go up in the revs a bit more you got 630 horsepower as we mentioned 730 Newton meters of torque and most of that coming between 3,000 and 5,500 rpm the front end feels really grippy really communicative because the aero, so you're getting 100 kilos of downforce at around 200 kilometers an hour, but the aero is really kind of 50-50 between the front and the back. So the front end doesn't feel like it's floating while the rear is really grippy. To be honest, you can feel that pretty instantly. The power, I mean, there's loads of power. Now, because I don't know the track, we're gonna break plenty of time, better safe than sorry. But yeah, the front end feels really communica communicative, sorry. And often what you'll get is a lot of grip around the back. But this one, because you don't have a big, uh, big rear wing, is actually pretty even, which feels quite nice. 
and through and this is actually a good track to try the, the brakes do take some some getting used to anyways we're going to start trying to go a little bit faster we're going to do one more lap as well so this corner here kind of comes in and cuts around rear the acceleration is pretty crazy i mean with these turbo engines you can really press it the gearbox is fantastic and the brakes are so powerful i mean the car the engine itself is only around 200 kilos and the car is 1500 kilos which in today's day and age is pretty impressive now for a car which was developed to be a gt more than a race car it feels very poised very tamed and pretty comfortable on track now you've got rear wheel drive but in sport it's already Oh, all the way, I have to press it longer. There we go, now we're in track, so you can see the different uh, dash right there. And now you've got about, I think it's 50% approximately of the traction kind of kicking in. So it's letting you have a little bit more fun. I mean, as I said, I don't know the track, I don't know the car, so we're not gonna be able to go too crazy with it. But you can feel that things kind of stiffen up a little bit more. And what's really, for me at least, right now, you know, I'm not, I'm not a racing driver, and it's quite a quick session in this. It's okay if we do one more? Yeah. Perfect. It's, uh, it just feels quite confidence leading. It's not intimidating at all. And I mean, it's fast. It's fast. And I'm not even scratching the surface of what, what the car can do. But yeah, pretty confidence leading. Lots of grip. Very linear power delivery. So it's not kicking in all of a sudden and surprising you. And the rear isn't stepping out feels very balanced between the front and the rear from A, the center of gravity being low, being central, but B, as I said, the aerodynamics being pretty central as well. I'm really enjoying the gearbox and the brakes, once you get used to the feel a little bit more, are quite communicative. It's a fun track, this. Really fun track. What a, what a great car, I mean, if you're looking in this segment for a car to be able to drive around and look great and then be able to come and have a good time on track like this, it's a great offering. We do one lap slowly. Oh yes, yeah. Okay. Right, so for that, perfect time to go from track back into GT. And then you can even put it in automatic and we're cruising in a GT car around a track but no really really cool I mean you know these are you're coming along with me for my real first impressions guys but it feels like a really complete package what comes across the most is that is is the balance and the front end grip and communicativeness through the steering wheel or the front end so a lot of modern cars now will be quite um just kind of filtered what you're feeling especially through the front end and they'll have loads of air around back but not so much then in the front so the back will be planted but then the front will feel a little bit floaty when you're accelerating but this feels pretty planted in both both of those so uh, so yeah i mean the one thing which does take some getting used to is the brake feel but that's often the, the case with uh, with ceramics the simplistic interior is really nice when you're driving inside and gives you really good visibility so no pretty awesome i really like this uh, dash as well it works quite well i don't know if you guys can see it with the angle you're on here but the dash gives you all the information you need straight away especially in track mode it's easy to see kind of what you want in front of you so overall really good fun and i'm sure when you're driving around like this i mean there's not much noise the uh, suspension feels really compliant i mean everything gets harder in track mode but like this, it feels like you could really crunch miles in this car quite a bit. Impressive package, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Very cool. And boom. And then to go into park, neutral, park. Yeah, you just stop the engine. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Awesome. All right, we're back in the pit lane now. After having driven, there's a friend of mine, Romain Monti, YouTuber over there, who's filming his uh, 
his videos for his channel right there with the car. And uh, yeah, no, it's been a pretty, pretty awesome. We've only had about an hour here on the track, so I hope it all came across okay in, in the video. Um, it was, it was cr pretty uh, quick film and dash kind of a scenario, but awesome. I mean, a huge thank you to Maserati. It's always, always feels kind of surreal to be able to be one of the first people to drive a new car like this. And uh, yeah, I just feel very, very lucky to be able to experience this kind of thing. New track as well. Look how cool this track is. It's really cool seeing that, but um, yeah, to the few laps that, that I had, you know, I'd love to be able to drive the car on the road as well at some point, but the few um, uh, laps that I had on track, it, it, it felt really promising, and uh, I look forward to hopefully being able to experience it a little bit more one day. I love the interior of the car. Don't know what you guys feel about it. Please comment down below, and uh, we can continue the discussion down there a little bit more. But I need to now rush back, because uh, I think we're going to have a quick little factory tour, which I'm going to put on my Instagram, and then back to, uh, back to Monaco. But yeah, I hope you're all doing well. And uh, I'll see you again very soon. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.